Yeah. Like I linked on the link. I went on the link and it said must update. Ugh. Yeah. Thank you, Amber. You're Thank you, welcome. Amber. Bye. Bye. I, I, I'm going to, I got to transfer everything over to you too. So just give me a few minutes. I'll put myself on mute. Because much like Christine, I am also sitting in my car in a parking lot waiting for kids stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Shock of all shocks. Yeah. Summer is long but short. <laughs> Summer is yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I guess I'll wait a few minutes. Um, I heard from well, I heard from Marcus that he's away, and I heard from Tate that he's away. So I'm not sure either of them are going to log in. Um, but we have one, two, we have three members, and we're technically supposed to have four for quorum. But if we want to ask anybody else. And I was just trying to remember if anybody else said they weren't available or who said they weren't available. It's hard in the summer. Yeah, especially mid-August. It's just a tough time. And even, you know, even Guilford is out today. So let's see. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I guess I can check. So I can, I mean, um, I can see if any, anybody else is coming, but... Do we, um, are we able to meet? So, I mean, we're able to meet and, um, I mean, we can talk to, I mean, I think if we don't have a quorum, we just can't make decisions. Yeah. Which would be unfortunate. Oh, see, Joe's here. Thank you, Joe. Hi. <laughs> How's your summer? Okay. <laughs> good, good. We just came back from uh, California, from nice, Chico, nice. Sierra Nevada. Real super nice. Back yeah. to the community. Oh, yeah, great. Um, yeah, so Tate and Marcus are both away, and I know Chris has to leave. Um, so Jess is here, Jess Loudon from Mass Bike, and I want to give her the floor. But just because we have a quorum now, and I don't know if we will later. Um, one question that came up is about the streetlights policy and that. Um, so when it went to the council last week, it was referred back to TSO. And can we can we make sure too if we have any oh no, we don't have any attendees. I know that Eve Vogel was talking about coming to the meeting, but um um so it was referred to TSO and to GOL to look at again. There had been significant changes since an earlier version. And it was also referred to the finance committee and um people from TSO, including the chair, reached out to me and invited TAC to participate when TSO is having discussions about it. So, I mean, just a question for the committee. I can also, you know, ask some of our other members who aren't here, but if we feel like we would like all of TAC to come to the TSO meeting and talk about it. Oh, and here, Kim is here too, yeah. Um, so Kim, I was just talking about the streetlights policy and I know that Chris has to run. So just while we have the most members here, um, Marcus and Tate are both away. Um, I was asking just about what, so with the streetlights policy that's, you know, gone through a lot of iterations, but in the last time I went to the council, the councilors had a long discussion about it, I think about two hours, and it was referred back to TSO and to GOL as well as finance. So the question to- what's the, what's the second committee? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Uh, okay, so- TSO is Town Services and Outreach. They're the oh, ones yeah. who do the public way. GOL is Governance, Organization, and Legislation. And they don't look so much at um, the details about, you know, whether they support what's in legislation or not. It's more about, like, for changing bylaws and things. It's more about is what's being proposed, like, understandable, actionable, like, does it make sense? Okay. Um, so they don't. They don't critique it. They just, I mean, from that perspective, so they just want it just to be. the TSO that reached out to us. Right. And then, right. And um, Eve Vogel had, like, sent some extensive comments, and I had sent comments as well. And um, so the question is with TAC is whether 
we would like to have like some TAC members go to a TSO meeting um, and represent TAC there or whether we would want to, whether all of TAC should discuss it, you know, before TSO discuss it and do we want to make anything official or do we just want to make our next meeting the same as the can TSO further, meeting? Can you further define the, <laughs> the questions? Like, it was just rant, like sort of generally referred to TSO. Well, there were concerns there... about um, there were concerns about safety elements of it. So E. Vogel, um, who was formerly on TAC, right? She's written yeah. some extensive columns for the Indy about it and about how the proponents of the dark size policy that they were advised in the policy by James Lowenthal, who's an astronomy professor at Smith College. And he's also a big dark skies proponent. And he tends to think that less light at night is better, even for mm -hmm. bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, and so the streetlights policy was written with a focus on that lens, in my opinion. And it did not, from the time it first came before the council a year ago, I didn't think that it was adequately paying, it was paying adequate attention to safety. And so Eve has brought up so some questions why, about- extensively why it was sent back to TSO. Yeah, so Eve is actually now in the waiting room, I think, if we want to let her in, yeah. Well, so haven't haven't we already added our comments to this, and which essentially they ignored? Um, so we added comments, um, but the thing is that like Eve's columns and also she proposes ways in which the what's being proposed in the policy could be tweaked to both have safety and more dark skies. Um, and so the council is interested in that. And yeah. um, and the sponsors who had brought it, the council sponsors are interested in looking at that more too. So, and I had suggested some of the same, I mean, Eve and I, and Eve is now here as an attendee, but um, some of what we, she and I had both suggested is looking, you know, at the functionality of different types of roadways, you know, in terms of like you have arterial roadways and you have like neighborhood roadways and that you can have different lighting standards for like your bigger roadways where cars are going faster and where there's more fatal crashes and there's just it's a lot more nighttime traffic and that you can continue to have in neighborhoods, you could continue to have like less lighting and or focus on the darkness. Yeah, I which... guess um, just based on, I, I think I sort of am kind of in Kim's corner. The okay, initial, sure. Impetuses, we already commented. We did, it's <laughs> but, true. But that said, I what hasn't been discussed is the common ground or the ways in which they these two sides don't have to be diametrically opposed to one another so mm. you know right. um eve and what she has tweaked and um to kind of come out with ways to think about this so that all parties can be satisfied but there's got to be i mean we're definitely not the first community who's ever looked at this and i think it's kind of odd that it's like so like that the debate is so not common ground focused and so for me that would be the new element to add mm -hmm. and, um where the where um you know goals can be achieved together and so i would like to i would want tack to be playing that role and i don't necessarily care if it means we do that work separately mm -hmm. and then one person goes or if we all participate at TSO my sense right. is that all of us participating at TSO might yeah. be problematic <laughs> and yeah so right yeah so let's have a we could do like a working group that takes sure. a look at ways to make it and, um able to satisfy yeah no I think and some of the counselors are really interested in that too right that yeah. I mean the like the the title of Eve's columns, and I know Eve has her hand raised, but the title of her columns was about 
how like safety and dark skies don't have to be like opposed that you can find the common ground and you can find right. things that work. And so I've been told by TSO that it will be, it's probably going to be on their agenda on September 14th. So if, and the, and the, the counselors who created it um, have not yet sent me like a copy of it. Cause I think they're still making some tweaks based on the last round of public comments. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to commit to having a meeting on the 7th, we could talk about it then September 7th. And then like one or two of us could go to the meeting on the 14th would be the idea. So I'm fine with that. I mean, I do think that, you know, TSO has five members and I mean, so, you know, if you get, too many people yeah i know that's in a awesome, meeting awesome. it's just <laughs> so and i would like to particularly once the counselors um share their latest version that hopefully is more oriented towards some of the common ground that um i would look you know look forward to tack commenting on that so but eve do you have any comments can yeah and i don't know why um my video wasn't showing but there's no place that i can um, enable my video, oh. but, um, so I oh. would, um, I would really love to actually do a presentation for you guys, um, in your meeting. <laughs> Hold on a sec. I'm promoting you to panelist. Okay, good. Are you a panelist? Yay. Yeah. Thanks. Tracy. Okay. <laughs> hey, Sorry about that. Um, so, um, yeah, I literally spent five weeks like researching and putting together diagrams on this issue. Like I spent a crap load of time because I think it's actually really, really important. Um, yeah. and, um, I could, I, I think I could spend less time than that to like explain what I, what I found and what I put together, um, for you guys. Um, as far as I remember being in one of the two meetings where you talked about this policy and, and my recollection is that you were a little bit reticent on your comments. Like you sort of made comments about specific like tweaks, but didn't kind of have big, broad overall comments. And, um, that's really what I ended up advancing. I really think the way that they had it written, um, it was very one-sided and rigidly so, and would have, um, threatened, uh, the safety of bicyclists and, and pedestrians in many parts of town, which is why I spent all of that time, one, one month out of my sabbatical doing just three lights, not what I planned. Um, but anyway, so I would be delighted to be able to like, just sort of kind of synthesize and I made a bunch of diagrams. So I think I could use those to kind of summarize some of what I found. And then, um, yeah, to give you a little context, Tracy, for the dates you were saying, um, after, Tracy and I reached out to different council members. It clearly really made an impact. And um, the one of the proponents, Mandy Jo Haneke, um, reached out to me the next day. And she and I are gonna meet on September 1st to try to sort of come up with a policy proposal that would do the both and. And so yeah. if I were gonna do a presentation to you at the next meeting, um, and, and that were after September 1st, then I could sort of summarize, you know, what was, what of the ideas that, that I had analyzed got put into that and, and, and sort of what I see that, that is, has changed and, and what I think about that. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. I mean, so, um, I mean, that sounds good to me and it sounds like if people are available to meet on the 7th, that we could have a TAC meeting on the 7th and that will be after Eve and Mandy Jo Henneke have met. And so hopefully they'll have the updated version. And then TSO, as I said, TSO had reached out to me and said they were planning to have it on their agenda on the 14th. So, And um, so just to be clear, works. if we set the meeting for the 7th to do it and the Mandy Joe sort of revision, Eve conversation revision isn't quite ready, we could, is there still going to be something that we could work off of? I think so. I think okay. we would have those updates and yeah. And I, right. and I think too, they could turn around at least like a draft version or something. Eve, oh. thank you for spending so much time oh, on that. I you. just, I just was really, st I don't really, I read the indie every now and again. I, you know, kind of read the Hampshire Gazette every morning. And I was just like, this, this is just so weak. Like, I just felt like the debate was very odd. 
um, because there was no <laughs> no recognition of all the common ground that right. everybody's trying to achieve. <laughs> it's very strange. No, and so counselors, many counselors appreciated Eve's work. And I mean, so I had, um, you know, I had done a lot of research too, just to point out like the resources and where you can find common ground, like in terms of best practices for policies, like this is all, these issues have been discussed for a long time. Right. So, and and cool. a lot of the transportation professionals have been concerned about safety at night for a long time. Yeah, because so many, there are anything. so many fatalities, including pedestrian fatalities at night. So um, I had done a lot of research, but then Eve, you know, and we're very grateful, like she took it to the next level instead of just telling them that they should be looking at these resources and studies. She actually said, this is what you could do instead. So yeah, nice. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, it's true like tracy so, was the one that fed me the crucial I mean, sources that i then built yeah. from until you said stop sending me studies i don't want to read anymore but, <laughs> but i now have read hundreds of studies uh, and we have on, probably uh, be at 5 30 as well at the same if, time yeah you, we'll do it at 5 30 so if you that, haven't if you haven't read the indie series that i put together they're long and overwhelming but i'll just tell you briefly that the first one is on what their policy says and why it's potentially dangerous. And I have a lot of statistics about past crashes um, and accidents in Amherst that Tracy helped point me to um, that have happened at night. And then the second one is on what those sources say um, pedestrians and bicyclists need in terms of lighting to be safe. And then the third one, I put it together and say, okay, how could we sort of best practice kind of start to do both? Right. So if you yeah. don't want to read all 10,000 words of Eve's, well, you could start with the third one because the third okay. one sums it up nicely. And I know some people were getting a little overwhelmed by all of them. Um, Joe, very comprehensive. Have yes, hands Joe. Hey, I just had a question. Uh, yeah, I was reading over the policy and in illumination, the illumination section A and B, is that the IES-8, is that like the latest printed standards? I just wanted to, to confirm that if anybody knows. I think them, those it, are the latest standards. Um, I think one challenge, and Eve points this out in some of her comments, is like that the guide to some of them are like not really available. And it's like a hundred, you know, like hundreds of dollars to access like their whole manual. But those are considered the best, you know, some of the best exactly. standards. Because yeah. that's what I was curious about, because it looks like the council gets a lot of leeway so i'm just curious about what they would be using as their their scientific right standards and and, and that was one of my comments to them is like i thought you know they had things in there like the dpw will decide you know when to dim lights and how much to dim lights and and then the council has the ability to dim lights additionally and and my comments to the council were like that you should set up like kind of guidelines for that and I mean, I don't think that most people on the councils are experts on this. And so I would like it all to be like in a bigger framework, you know, for the future and that the policy now could say we will create a framework and then make decisions about lighting, like based on the framework, just like Northampton has a framework for its decisions. Like if you ask for lights to be removed or new lights to be installed, you know, there's like different forms for each of those um, requests and they sort of, they lay out like how close are you to your neighbors, you know, what are like all the different kind of criteria that are, go into those decisions. So, and uh, that's the sort of approach that I was mm -hmm. hoping for. So, it, because I mean, the, one of the things is the council said they wanted to be based on like, you know, science and things and not just based on people making requests, but it seems like if you, leave a lot of it up to the counselor's discretion yes. that that could actually make it more political and not less political so yeah but um but we do have jess here so i'd love to like move on and let jess talk sure. and um, jess is a resident of northampton so she might know she could also comment about <laughs> northampton street lights if she wants so so can you unmute oh great yeah i can um awesome hi everyone hi I'm I'm Jess Slavin. Uh, yeah, as Tracy said, I live in Northampton. Um, I'm Mass Bikes Communications Coordinator, so I work on our statewide work. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Mass Bike, we are the nonprofit that works on better bicycling advocacy across Massachusetts. 
Um, and so I was, I'm just here to give a little kind of like intro to us and a little update. And then I have um, some ways that we're trying to help municipalities. Um, Cause while we do do kind of like that upper tier work, we're always looking for how we can support folks like you all who are working at that local level, which is where we see like the most critical um, battles to be fought really on in terms of safer roadways, you know. Um, a lot of stuff happens at that local level that's really going to transform the way our our streets and trails are better serving bicyclists and pedestrians and everyone else. Um, so, yeah, as I said, Mass Bike um, works on kind of that upper policy level. Um, we were really excited to have some legislative wins this past year. Um, I know Tracy talked about an act to reduce traffic fatalities, um, but that's something that we're really trying to push um, the communications on, especially the fact that motorists need to give four feet for all vulnerable road users now. Um, I just saw Pete Sutton, who's the statewide bike ped coordinator last week in Holyoke, and he was saying that municipalities who requested signs should be getting them in the next couple months soonish. Um, that's what he was saying a couple months ago, though. So <laughs> hopefully by the end of the year, um, municipalities. And I, and I know that like Jason, Jason is here from the DPW, right? Uh, Amherst requested some signs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did. And we're Excellent. still we're still waiting, but I don't know. Yeah, we're. We're... By the end of the year, they say. Yeah. Pete's saying soon, so hopefully he meant it. Um, but yeah, what really the excited. Say? What do they look like? Um, so they have a bicycle on them, and then they say motorists must give four feet. Ah, cool. I haven't um, seen them. Yeah, yeah they're and I know that I had asked at one of one of Pete's um like advisory meetings. He has a statewide you know bike ped advisory board about um about if they would have different signs with like pedestrians and stuff too i don't i don't know if they've expanded it beyond just bicycles they, they were gonna just keep the bicycles for now they, yeah. there was requests for wheelchairs and mm -hmm. pedestrian and i think for now they're just gonna sort of standardize with the bicycle um but try to make somehow make it indicate obvious all, yeah. all users all, all vulnerable road users. All road users, yeah. Yeah, okay. And that vulnerable road user definition that got passed in Act Reduced Traffic Fatalities, as everyone's saying, was pretty broad. It was basically everyone who is not inside of a motor vehicle. So basically it's pedestrians, roadside workers, equestrians, farm tractor vehicles, um, all of those are like encompassed. Um, and that's something, even though at Mass Bike, we're like advocating for bicycles, we're trying to make sure that that is very well known. Um, and that vulnerable road user definition it encompasses a, a large amount of people who are walking and rolling and on our roadways. Um, and, and I think it's amazing, like Mass Bike, I've, I um, have shared the link to like the webinar that was done by Mass Bike, and you're like the only organization that's done like a public webinar for everybody on the, to my knowledge, on the law. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So. I will definitely tell my boss, Galen, he was really excited to do that webinar with Senator Brownsberger, um, yeah, who was, was a really key player yeah. in um, getting that law passed. Um, so yeah, so four feet, uh, I, I did give Tracy some stickers, but if any of you want some four foot passing stickers, my little ones actually look like what the signs are going to look like. So um, they had the little bike and the four foot passing stuff. And then I have some like bumper stickers too. Um, and I can, I was on that email thread, but I could throw my email in the chat if people want um, some stickers. Um and I know I think Chris reached out to you to get more stickers for like events later, but we are going to be giving out the stickers at the back to school event that the Amherst schools are having on Tuesday, August 29th. That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, so. And I, I also give you, I know you all know, or Tracy and Chris will know about our lights brigade, um, but part of the law was also that bicyclists now need front and rear lights when riding at night. Um, one of Mass Bikes programs is we give out free lights to anyone who needs them. Um, you can request them for events like Safe Routes to Schools, but we also like to have people 
um, do lights handouts as it's getting darker and just hand them to people who are biking and it might be getting dark um, to brighten them up as they go. Um, and we have lots of lights. You just need to request them through the website. Um, you can shoot me an email. I can send you the link to the form. Um, if any of you wanted to do your own lights brigade um, outside of the Safe Routes of Schools, um, but that's something that we're really dedicated in making sure people have lights because sometimes that can be a financial barrier to folks or people just don't realize how important it is to, to be bright when they're riding around. Um, a couple other things that I, I personally like to highlight in the act to reduce traf traffic fatalities that passed is the fact that the state will be coming out with a public facing crash portal uh, for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, the law that passed said they need to have it up and running by April 2024. Um, and I know that they're working on it. So hopefully we'll be hearing something by the end of the year about when timeline on when that might be available. Um, what's great about this is uh, police departments are going to be getting a standardized crash reporting form right now. Um, mass bike tracks, um, bicyclists fatalities and crashes, and uh, Walk Massachusetts does a lot with the pedestrian crashes and fatalities, um, but the data is kind of muddled right now. Sometimes you can't tell if it's a bicyclist or a pedestrian, um, so we're really looking forward to being able to have this cleaner data um, so that we can better advocate for the areas where there are dangerous situations for vulnerable users. Um, so that's um, something that we're really looking forward to and are glad that passed. Um, and I told Tracy this when we chatted, but uh, the Bike League is coming out with um, bikeability audit. So if you're familiar with AARP's like walk audit toolkit, um, the Bike League is going to be coming up with like a bike audit toolkit. So that's something that you could potentially implement in your community if there is an area where you have concerns about bicyclists and pedestrian um, safety. Um, and it's one of those things where you'd ride with a group and kind of like mark down um, in the different like uh, bikeability aspects. And um, the Bike League showed me like a kind of a prelim, uh, preliminary version of it back in March at the Bike Summit in DC. Um, so I'm hopeful that that will be coming down the pipe soon and I can share that with you all when it does, if that is something you're interested in implementing at all um, in your community. Um, and then the other part of an act to traffic fatalities that I'm um, looking forward to is that trucks, who, that are state contracted are required to have additional safety devices, um, backup cameras, side guards, extra mirrors. Um, and then uh, because the state can only do it on the state contracted trucks, something that Mass Bike is telling communities is that that's something that you could potentially also implement on like a city or town level. So Cambridge and Boston are both um, have their own policies where they require trucks that are contracted by those cities to have like additional safety um, gear on them. Um, so um, we're excited that the that it's happening at the state level. And we're also, um, when we were down at the Bike Summit in DC, talked about it on the federal level too. There's some federal side guard legislation um, that they're currently working on. So we're hoping that large trucks will need to have side guards on a federal level soon, which means even more of those large trucks that are driving through our communities. Yes. What are side guards? Yeah, so side guards are, um, they go along the bottom edge of the truck and they're like hard. So basically what they do is they prevent people or cars from getting like pulled under a truck. Uh -huh. So one of the more fatal crash types that we see um, for not only bicyclists and pedestrians, but also cars sometimes too, is like a right hook. Um, mm -hmm. And so the side guards prevent um, people from being, um, Hold like, on underneath. seriously yeah. injured by getting like you can't go underneath the truck so you could um, still hit it but you wouldn't like go underneath yes so you, you would you would still over. impact the truck but you would not be pulled under which is the dangerous part 
um, in the Volpe Center in Cambridge has been doing a lot of um, work around side guards um, and have shown that they dramatically reduce um, fatality rates if you were to get into a right hook incident and their side guards on the truck, um, which is why we're really excited that state contracted trucks are all mm. like the very large ones are all going to be getting um, side guards. Yeah, uh, some of that Volpe research, some of the research team members are people who still are affiliated or, you know, graduated from UMass Amherst. So um, I have copies of that paper if anybody wants it. But okay. yeah, they're they're doing a lot of really, yeah. really good research um on the side guard front. Um and I know um so Mass Bike is part of the Vision Zero Coalition. So we're part of a coalition of nonprofits and advocacy organizations that um, support the idea of having zero traffic fatalities on our roadways. And we, as the coalition, did submit a letter of support um, to the federal um, side guard work that's going on. So um, not sure what will happen with that, but we're, we're hopeful for some federal regulations. So then more trucks in Massachusetts beyond just the state contracted ones um, can have increased safety devices and make sure all those vulnerable users um, aren't as impacted by large vehicles on our roadways potentially. Um, so that's actually traffic fatalities um, and some of the like key highlights. Um, and then the only other last thing about that is the 25 mile per hour speed limit. It just like had a technical fix to make it easier for um, cities and towns if they wanted to lower their speed limit on thickly settled to 25 miles per hour, just kind of like clarified um, that they had like the ability to do so. Cause I guess before it was a little, little wonky. Um, so I know other um, municipalities have been working on lowering their speed limits in thickly settled areas to 25 miles per hour. Um, which slower speeds are something Mass Bike also fully supports in terms of increasing safety on our roadways for vulnerable users. Um, something else Mass Bike worked on um, and is continuing to work on is e-bike, let it like defining them in state law so that regulations around them can be more defined because up until last year, they had no state definition, which left them kind of in this very odd gray area and people weren't sure if they counted as a moped, if they counted as a bike, like what was going on. Um, so as of 2022, um, class one and two e-bikes, which are the lower speed ones, are treated as bicycles with the caveat that they cannot be ridden on sidewalks and that they are allowed on bike paths unless a municipality goes through or whoever oversees the bike path goes through a public process to restrict them. Um, and they are not allowed on most natural surface trails, except if the landowner decides to allow them. Um, I know that's a little confusing. So <laughs> if you have questions about that, yes. What are the lower speed? Like, what's the maximum speed? So it's 20 miles per hour. Okay. The, um, it cuts out at 20 miles per hour and it's a 750 watt. Um, most e-bikes in bike shops, like reputable bike shops are class one and two. Class one doesn't have a throttle. It's all pedal assist. Class two can have a throttle, but it also has pedal assist. Um, and class three, we have not gotten defined. Um, in mass state law, um, that's something we're working on, and we're still trying to figure out where. Oh, where what are is. what's the speed of a class three? Twenty eight. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. so it's over twenty. Anything over twenty is. Yeah. So it's specifically twenty eight. It's a little confusing because these are, so these are the classes that um, align with federal standards right now, and what the class system that many other states have adopted. Um, the problem being there are bikes that don't quite fit into those classes that do kind of like scooch into that like more like moped -y, uh category, but look a little closer to a bike. So it's this thing that we're definitely working on and working with stakeholders to kind of figure out the best way. Um, because we do see e-bikes as a really good transportation option for folks. Um, and we definitely want people to be able to ride them. Um and 
also increasing education around how to ride them safely and how to be respectful of all road users and pathway users um, is something that that Matt Spike we're definitely thinking a lot about. We're currently running a pilot program in Worcester where we're distributing e-bikes to low-income individuals and tracking their mileage and tracking their usage and like providing with a lot of education around how to ride and how to ride safely. Um, so we're kind of piloting that right now. And the League of American Bicyclists is also coming out with a full e-bike rider curriculum. Um, so that's something that we will have in our toolkit down the road as well. Um, do you guys do anything with, um, particularly with the e-bikes that seem to go, you know, 20, 20 miles per hour is really fast. I mean, I'm, I'm a competitive cyclist. I, I have been. And 20 is really fast. It's not mm -hmm. what most cyclists do, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're on a street and someone's going 20 miles an hour as a cyclist, that's super fast. Mm -hmm. um, is there um, uh, additional legislation about, or are you thinking about um, helmet? So 20 is the max speed. Most of them aren't. It's like actually hard to get the like pedal assist ones up to 20 like consistently right but I'm, I'm just wondering about like commensurate like um helmet like uh, oh over. yeah because because to me there are lots especially here where e-bikes are kind of like new and students are really into them which is cool and they're using them but nobody seems to ever wear a helmet and these are all new users and they're using them at night they're using them on the roads like mm -hmm. I'm just I I think really we need we need to advocate for that as well because 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 otherwise there's going to be more accidents just because these are new users yeah so class one and two did not come with any additional helmet requirements um, but that's one of the things we're considering in class three, since that one is even faster, is having a like helmet requirement with that one for sure is one of the things on the table. Um, so yeah, I agree. More e education on helmets and trying to make sure that e-bikers and everyone is well-versed on helmet usage and how to wear it properly and why they need to wear them, I think is really important. So but I think it's also challenged like with some of like some, you know, bike sharing systems like in DC and Valley bikes and things, right? They don't provide helmets. And mm -hmm. so I have been in a few places like where as part of the rental, a helmet is included. Um, though I've mentioned that to people here and they thought that was like disgusting or something, but like for people who don't have a helmet and um, it just, you know, I don't know if you'd want to legislate it, but just to like encourage it or have programs where you give out helmets or something, because there are, you know, with the bike share programs, there just are so many people who might not have biked very much. And when Valley Bikes was active, I mean, in U around UMass, right, there's a lot of students who are riding, they mm -hmm. may not be bicyclists usually they're just doing these short trips but as kim was saying they're on the road and a lot of the lights aren't very bright mm -hmm. i don't think they probably even had like both front and rear lights because it was you know before the legislation and and it just always made me feel like really nervous i mean i feel the same about like people being on the road with like scooters and mm -hmm. like, different types of faster moving alternative modes that um than people without helmets <laughs> but um yeah I mean there aren't really programs to give out helmets like for adults or yeah, are there definitely so. a gap we've been we've seen as well um I know there are a variety of like public health departments have taken that on as initiatives um so yeah that's definitely something on our radar as well as Safer at the School does a pretty okay job of trying to get helmets to kids across the state, but there's definitely a gap when it comes to adult riders. And um, as you all like very appropriately point out, a lot of e-bike riders are people who are, don't always have the cycling skills that um, other other riders might have for education, or especially um, people who came from like a more um, a racing background or a background where like you learn a lot of those like handling skills 
um, over. No, so does your do these pilot programs like the Worcester one? Do they include like helmets and things? Yeah. Do you give those if they need them? Yeah. Okay. So our pilot program, we gave everyone helmets, uh, locks, covers for their bicycles, and lights. Um, and also, uh, we gave them reflective vests. Um, and a lot of them, we gave them gloves in the winter. That was like a special request thing, trying to make sure that they had the gear to ride all year round. And again, the population we're giving them to were low income environmental justice community folks who needed these for transportation. Um, so yeah, we made sure that they had all of the safety. Yeah. And you um, were saying when we were talking, right, that you were tracking them, like tracking their mileage and people are mm -hmm. using them year round, which is great. Yes. So. Yep. They were using them all year round. And, um, massbike.org backslash ebike Worcester. I have a link to a public facing spreadsheet with all of the stats for miles and trips. Um, we get, it's self-reported data, but it's, we get miles, trips, and trip types. So you know what kind of trips they're doing. Um, it was cool. Something we noticed was the people who got e-bikes, they started with recreational trips and then started using it more for transportation as they got more comfortable after they used it for more recreational purposes for a month or so. Um, so I think that's really interesting data. And yeah, it's been a really cool project to, to watch and see these riders. That's great. Thank you. And you said, I think when we talked, right, you said that um, the Pine Valley Planning Commission is doing something similar yeah, right in, in Holyoke is that right? Or so Holyoke or... and Springfield. Okay. Um, they're actually distributing some e-bikes this weekend out of Rad Springfield. Um, and I know that Alex, who is our Worcester program manager, is going to be down there on Sunday with them to help them out. Um, since she's done ninety-eight distributions to people so far for our program, she's just gonna help share some best practices that we learned to make sure those riders are um ready to roll in Springfield. Um, and I'm I'm not sure what um how they're setting it up, but I think they did model it after how we did our distributions. Um, so I'm going to assume that they're also getting the similar um, safety and right. um, like on bike training. So yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Um, so hopefully we see more from that program soon. And both of those projects were funded through the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center's Act for All grant. Um, and they were one of a handful of programs. Um, so uh, there are a couple other programs who were... Um, piloting other types of e-bike incentives. So on the Cape, they did like a straight voucher program. Um, and the state, on a state level, so MassBike um, advocated for um, e-bike rebates, which is something that did get passed last year, but it didn't get budgeted for this year. And the Healy administration is saying that they're potentially, hopefully going to be funding it next year. Um, and those e-bike rebates um, would hopefully be point of sale. So it would be like the money off, like at the register and available at local bike shops. So like a place like Northampton Bicycle would be able to offer um, the amount off, like right at the register. Um, but right now the Department of Energy Resources is evaluating how to roll out that program. Um, and we're hoping for funding next year. Um, to be able to get that because there is a couple of their states who have done the e-bike rebates and it's been super successful and like over enrolled and like so yes e. oh, okay. all right um I'm curious uh how much has been promoted about scooters and e-scooters um not, I, not that I think that they're not going to be a problem because um, I think everyone's a little terrified of what they're going to do to traffic. But realistically, in terms of affordability and convenience and the ability to go from walking to bus to, you know, I just think, I honestly think scooters are the way of the future for a lot of people. And so I'm just curious. Um, I mean, I think of UMass students, you know, like, anyway, Um I'm curious sort of if Mass Bike has has been in on some conversations or if you know of incentive programs or people trying to think ahead rather than just reactively, you know, about how to do a scooter rollout that's going to be safe, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So we haven't been in a ton of talks about micro mobility, um, e scooter beyond um, discussions. We've had a, a couple of combos with like super pedestrian, but like not really thinking about that full rollout. Um, I do know that like Pittsfield has scooters. Um, but I'm not sure like what the uptick has been. Um, in terms of a rebate, I haven't heard much since the price point for them tends to be a little bit lower, like quite a bit than e-bikes, obviously. Um, I feel like some people do end up tending to go the e-scooter route. Um, and as you said, they are a little more uh mobile. Uh you can some of them fold, you can fold them up and you know, go with them. Um but yeah, I will definitely check in with my boss to see if he's had any more, heard anything else. Um, he's kind of our legislative lead. So if there's anything happening state housewide, um, he would know. But I haven't heard anything trickle down to me yet in terms of that. Um, but we're hoping that with our vulnerable user definition that we can kind of kind of make sure that anytime we're using that definition and moving forward to increase safety on the roadways, that we can kind of scoop everyone into it that way. I'll just re also briefly report um, for, I guess maybe none of you know other than Tracy that I've been working to try to organize at UMass an event that would happen in the first week of um, school where we would hand out lights and reflectors and educate people about um, alternative transportation. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get enough people to work with me on it. And I gave up. Um, I wrote about streetlights. I didn't organize this event in September, but I think organizing an event like that in the fall, I mean, it's always just been really a bit of a, um, a bummer to me that math, the, the bike week is in May. Cause I think <laughs> around here, if it were in September, it would be great, you know, because mm -hmm. we have all these suburban kids who come to UMass and they last biked when they were 10 years old. And mm -hmm. there really would be an opportunity to, to teach them how to do it and to do it well. And then they would go back to their own home communities, you know, with yeah. that knowledge. I, anyway, I think it's just a super missed opportunity and, and it could happen at the town level, but even more important is in the three colleges and especially UMass just because of the numbers. Yeah. Um, but I, I gave up. I couldn't do it on my own. I agree. Um, I know that the UMass bike co-op has some momentum and I know Amherst College, um, their bike co-op um, is kind of getting off the ground. Um, so that might be, we, I know the students rotate so quick, so it can't, you can't always. Well, I know. So um, yeah, I, UMass, I mean, this is a while ago, but like my office that we had conversations with the UMass police about like promoting like safety right at the beginning of school and incoming students go through like all these different orientation programs and it was like questions and there's a lot of you know distracted biking and distracted walking and um distracted driving sometimes on campus and just how to make everybody safer and we didn't unfortunately we didn't manage to you know end up with a slot per se like in the orientation curriculums which are already like pretty extensive <laughs> But if there were to be events, you know, such as the one that Eve was proposing, um, like early in the school year, that would be a good opportunity just to really promote safety. And I mean, and some of the UMass students, right, are coming from out of state or um, or even out of the country. And so, you know, giving, letting people know about the rules here and the, you know, the act to reduce traffic fatalities and things like that. And I mean, and there's some. There's a great opportunity there if if we have the resources to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And something I shared with Tracy when we met um last week was when I was in grad school. Um, so I went to the University of Nebraska Lincoln for grad school. Um, and they had a really robust outdoor adventures program and they would host bike fest twice a year. So there they had an on campus bike shop. So they would do tune ups. The PD would come, but then also my favorite part was the bus. People would come with the bus, the practice bike rack. Mm -hmm. um, and we would show all the students how to use the bike rack. Um, and that was really successful. Um, but yeah, it takes a bit to organize. And it was always us trying to like 
<laughs> um, since after adventures paid their staff, they were able to like can pay some students to stop it. So yeah, it's always a, a challenge there for sure. Yes, should, that was that so uh, that was such fun. an amazing idea. The idea I have never used a bus after a bike because I have no idea how to use those bike rack things. They're really intimidating if you haven't used them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm I'm like an experienced cyclist and I have I would never do that. I love that idea. That is so brilliant. Thank you. Well, or maybe, you know, even if we didn't do a whole event, you know, maybe we could get I mean UMass Transit has a new, you know, director now. I mean, they could even just put a bike near the student center or something yes. maybe they could if they had the personnel they could just with the bus they don't have to have a big event they could just have a yeah. bus and just like yeah. let people try it <laughs> yeah no, i love that. that you guys should try this at the block party september oh 21st. yeah the i love party. it get pvta to park a bus somewhere yeah. on the closed street everybody could practice putting bikes on and then you can do other light distributions or anything like that like get on get on board with the bid and the block party um they're happy to have additional participants okay yeah jess can we get you with a table at the block party (laughs) yeah send me the date and i'll check my calendar yeah it's at least it's the 21st give you items that's great. I'm not going to have a lot of availability then, but I, I will Do you come think to the block party. Get a little. bus? I love this idea. We used to get a bus when we used to do the bike commute breakfast. Right. Immersed. We used to get a bus there with the bike rack on it so people could try it. Yeah. Trying my to fit my big dummy on it, but it was too long. You know, I the, love the, this. The extended bike didn't fit the bike rack. I Is just there someone I can con- contact at UMass that might, that, that we can... is it, do you think it's easier to get it through UMass or to get it through like P? Well, probably UMass. UMass, 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 UMass yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Who is it? Who is I'm it? I don't remember her name. Um, the new director. Yes, Connie oh. Englert. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. I actually used to work for her because I worked at PBTA. Yeah. How do you spell her la- their last name? Uh, I e E N G. Okay, I'll I'll figure it out. Well, and she can... came on board when Glenn retired, right? So she's been oh, right. she's like retired. a year. Been there a year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Glenn's gone. So. What what is the what date of the block party? September the block party 21st. is the twenty first. It's five so to nine. Thursday? Yeah, it's always on a Thursday always to a Thursday. bring Thursday. students downtown. Mm-hmm. And okay. it's um. It's five to nine. Five to nine? Yeah. All right. I mean, they, they're really, tra- they try to attract a lot of students downtown, so. Okay, I love this idea because I will actually do that same thing because maybe then I can convince myself and or my children to actually use the bus after the bike. Yeah. And we can ask Jess for more lights and, and stuff, so. Yeah, I would Definitely love that. Yeah. I yeah. have some handouts and stuff. Yeah, happy I just put out cool. my calendar, so consider me in too. Okay, okay. great. I just, I just have to you have a comment a... that um, when I first learned to um, put a bike on a bus rack was in Portland, Oregon in like 1991. And at that time, you actually had to get a permit that you paid $5 for in order to put your bike on the bus. And um, so they had this place right in downtown where you had to like show that you could do it before you got your permit. Ah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's a disincentive. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, the other thing that happens in Amherst actually is that most of the buses only will take two bikes and they fill up. Yeah. And in fact, when I was meeting with Jess, I was also saying, you know, when the semester starts and some students have chosen to live not that close to Amherst, you know, in Sunderland or Belchertown or whatever, even the buses fill up. I mean, yeah. Stefan would know better than I, but Stephane I've heard, I've heard people complaining about, you know, that they thought that they could just hop on the bus and get to class. And by the time the bus gets to their apartment complex, the bus is not taking any more people. Stefan has his hand up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I forgot to put it down from earlier. Oh. But everything you said is right. <laughs> so, I mean, so Stefan, do you know anything? I mean, I know you're not with UMass Trans anymore, but yeah. in well, terms I'm of like just... the labor, because I, I was listening in on a Western Mass Transportation mm-hmm. Advocacy group meeting last week, and they were saying mm-hmm. that there's a shortage of drivers across PVTA, but also even at UMass Transit. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm technically still on payroll there. I'm still eligible to drive. And actually, uh, if I want to stay on there, I have to drive like once every three months or something. Oh, so you could uh, drive well, the bus to our event. I could, I could. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yes, that is absolutely correct. There is a shortage. Uh, obviously, UMass Transit is, is unique because it has turnover every year because of the seat graduating seniors. Um, so I, I would say we definitely lose more than we gain, uh, at least initially. I mean, you have a big drop off people because you have a bunch of people um graduating and leaving um some mm-hmm. obviously stay and are looking for jobs some are still trying to figure it out but uh, some people do some adults people don't find jobs right away and still elect to move back to their hometowns um for whatever reason and the last thing you can work is graduation day you cannot work past oh. that if you don't commit to staying on for a bit of time so you do have that and recruitment's been pretty difficult um i think you know, there's parts that people say UMass isn't as much of a working school as it used to be. So people don't maybe feel as need. Uh, you know, I don't know how true that is, but that's something that I've just heard. And another one's also uh, the drug testing policy, um, because it, it falls under FTA requirements. Uh, yeah. It's not legalized under the federal guidelines. So we still do randomly drug test pre-employment and randomly throughout your career there. So yeah. I think there's, there's a bit of that, but it is, you know, the, um, they're good jobs, I think. They're but... good jobs. They pay. I mean, I think they cap out at uh, for a student job. It's good. I think it caps right. out at twenty three seventy five an hour, um, and you get paid for the training. You get paid for the conversion of your license from a D to a B. Um, so you really nothing comes out of your pocket. If anything, everything goes into your pocket. Um, and I really like working there. And I, you know, I have a lot of contacts there, and and people go on and find careers in transit uh, elsewhere that run R- RTAs and other transportation authorities. Oh. So. Um, yeah, anyway, but yeah, it, it, staffing is definitely an issue. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah. Connie's good. The new director, like she's, she's only been there since last summer. Um, and, uh, she's good. So if you want to reach out to her, I think your best bet is to go through not PBTA in Springfield, but UMass Transit and they'll, no, I think I'd so, be very yeah. surprised if they didn't let you borrow a, bu- a some kind of bus. Sure. I mean, Mm-hmm. Okay. They have like 40 buses and they all have bike racks. So, well, and we can talk to the bid too about like the space of it because I know they fill up right. the space, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not probably, yeah, probably better to do that first because of the positioning of where you want it and all that. Right. Okay. But yeah. Well, thank you. That's helpful. So, yeah. I know Chris was going to leave in a minute. Chris, your hand is still up. Are you still there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. Um, I would love to help out on the 21st. And the other thing, Eve, is maybe we could just figure out a way to do um, like a little event at Worcester Dining Common before the block party or something just to pass out lights and, you know, just generally start some kind of education piece. But um, I do need to go. Um, Tracy, I think you kind of know. Yeah. Yeah. the basics of safe routes to school and then um, just so you just fyi debbie westmoreland and i are both attending the signs and lines webinar oh good yeah i'm signed um, up for it too yeah okay Okay. all right bye guys okay thank you bye christine okay thanks and i had one other thing for jess if anybody else does and then we can let her go is jess done with her presentation are you done with your presentation yeah i'm pretty much done i think the (laughs) only other two things i just wanted to note was um, MassMake now has a municipal advocacy associate who's working on a project to kind of um, increase communication with groups like yours. There are groups in municipalities all across the Commonwealth working on very similar um, things as TAC here. And we're trying to create, first step is we're going to create a database of all of these groups that are working um, to make our, our cities and towns better places to bike and walk. And um, so that's step one and she's actually out here in East Hampton so another local person working on um, some great municipal advocacy work um so hopefully I can have more info on that as she like decides where her project goes in terms of like resources and if you have any ideas on resources that might be helpful to you on the municipal level um definitely let me know um and then I guess the only other thing is if you ever like are there's um, like, I guess individually, not a stack, but like have a uh, action alert, like you have something going on that you want people to know about uh, for better biking or whatever. Mass Bike is always happy to do like dedicated emails um, 
to help spread the word about things. If you're doing events like this block party, I could send out an email to everyone who lives in Amherst on the mass bike list and tell them mm-hmm. that it's mm-hmm. thing. Um, cool. So that's something that I'm really happy to help help do for you all. Yeah, well, well, we'll see where that goes. So I just, I did have one question in it. Um, I did, it came up last at our last meeting, the last TAC meeting in July and Joe had brought it up, but just about in terms of like helping people who have young kids about, you know, what are the best ways to transport kids? Um, and and even I think, you know, even like offering information about, you know, what are the options? I mean, there's tons of different options, but but also maybe even like some instruction if needed or whatever. Are you talking about bike bike options for parents with children? Yeah, parents with kids. On I mean, a bike. On a, yeah, like, about like, so like, because or... right, some parents might feel like, oh, it's too hard to get my kid on a, you know, a tag along, whatever it is. Um, do you do any kind of outreach or do you have, you know, materials that are put together about how easy it is to bike with kids or? We currently like don't, but okay. that's definitely something that would be great for us to put together. Um, I know that in some, there's, uh, there's a group in Cambridge that does these really cool, like basically like try it days where they'll host events where everyone who brings, they'll bring their like cargo bikes and their tag alongs to like a park and let other parents like try them out. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I've seen work really well on a local level. Um, if you have parents in your community who are already um, using bikes to mm-hmm. move their kiddos around. Um, but at mass bike level, we don't have anything like that. Okay. That's definitely something to put on the list of resources that could be created. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, it can be a little intimidating as a parent. While you're brainstorming, but, yeah. um, one thing they did in Portland was they took elderly people out on adult trikes. Um, I thought that was really cool too. Yeah. And we had, we had someone who went along Lincoln a lot. Um, yeah. Lincoln a lot on it was an elderly woman and I saw her all the time on her trike on Lincoln and I was like why don't more people it's just good exercise if nothing else a lot of adventures here in Northampton does Mm -hmm. a lot that's what um, I was gonna say a lot of events that are open um to the community to help older adults um with trikes and other other types of adaptive bicycles um, and Mass Bike has piloted some older adult programming with AARP. Um, it's not something we've like done statewide yet, but we've done some pilots in Worcester and Cambridge, um, uh, trying to figure out how to support older adults who either haven't biked in a while or never really biked a lot and figuring out how to um, encourage them and make them feel comfortable and safe when they're, when they're riding. So that's, well, and, I th- and that's also a target market, like for some of the e-bikes, I mm-hmm. think, cause I've seen research about how, you know, people who are ready to stop biking, like if they have the e-bike and the assist, you know, particularly on hills and things that that will extend their riding life. So yes, it can be very effective. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen so many people when I'm out biking and it's older people and they're past me and one lady goes, it's okay, honey, I'm on an e-bike and I'm like, thank you. Well, especially, right, I live off of Amity, like a huge hill and you just see the valley bikes just zoom right up there. (laughs) It's great. I want one of those. Yeah, so. All right. Well, thank you, Jess. This has been really helpful. You're You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, me. And it's great to hear about like advocate, you know, mass bike staff who are out in Western Mass too. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll throw my email in the chat if anyone wants to follow up with me about anything. Yeah, yeah. so I I did um, to... so see you on the email. I don't think the way Amherst has this stuff set up is you can do a chat. But... Oh, never mind. Well, I'm on the email. It's just Jess, J-E-S yep. at massbike.org. Um, Thank you. And yeah. we'll reach out to you when we need more like supplies and things. Is it easy? Is it best to contact you directly or to do it through the form on the website? So for the lights, do it through the form because I just don't have all of them here. Most of them are at our Boston office. Okay. Um, but I have a lot of stickers and stuff. So okay. yeah. Um, for all other stuff, just uh, reach out to me and I can coordinate. But yeah, I through the block party date on my calendar, so it's blocked off. I can awesome. I okay, thank you and help. All right.
Thank you. Bye. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, that was exciting. I hadn't even thought about the block party, but that's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, that's the perfect venue. I mean, you right. got a lot of students, a lot of residents, a lot, you know, it's a good... It's Everybody, a good... it's old, young. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the kid sure. always wants extra activities. You know, yeah. they want everybody to set up a table. They invite every bank in Western... <laughs> to set up a table, but know? no, but I also really like the idea of having a bus at like yes. at UMass, like yes. at, as you know, as Chris yes. said, like a dining common, but or like yeah. near the campus center. Because but I've I seen think, I've seen demos there too of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we had would, driving Everyone would there. try yeah. on the street. Everyone would try to put the bike on the rack. Mm -hmm. If you could do it on the on on the at the the block party. That is well, so cool. And one thing and I'm gonna do at that. Safe Roots, the safe I mean the the back to school event is I'm yes. gonna have I'm gonna have the pool noodle with the four feet too. I love it to show yeah, that. Great. So if somebody yeah. wanted to do that at the block party, we could do that too. <laughs> I've seen a few people with the noodles off hanging off. Their yeah, butt. well, that's what you, you want to demo it, right? So yeah. yeah. So and yeah, we should have maybe the signs off the noodles. <laughs> so so people, everyone reads that reads it. You know, you know, you know where I, people understand why there's people riding yeah. noodles on their bikes. Yeah, right, right, right. Like when I see it, I recognize it. I'm like, oh, yeah. they're they're practicing exactly. the four foot rule. But other people are like, what are they? Where are they going to well, the? We pool? could, you know, if we wanted to do, um, you know, we could get some media if we wanted if we wanted to do a little bike ride. I know that there was one down in Springfield. They did a four foot, you know, pool noodle ride or something. We should totally do that. So, yeah, we could do it. We'd, we'd have to pick a very like, and then we just, you know, we ask uh, the Republican and the Gazette and the Indy or something to promote yeah. it and things. Because I did contact, so um, I did notice at the town of Amherst, they did do some social media on the act to reduce traffic fatalities. But I think they only put it on their, ins like Brianna only put it on the Instagram account or something. <laughs> And I said, well, if once you have the infographic, can you just like post it on like every other type of feed too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was and um and I think I even asked it on the Instagram post and then she didn't um I never saw it anywhere else, but just not everybody's on Instagram. So but I think it could also be really effective. I don't know, Kim, what do you say? Like some, you know, Friday rush hour or something we could or even just just through UMass, you know, yeah. we just mm -hmm. have yeah, I would. I would have no a critical mass of. Myself. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to find a bunch of pool noodles, but I think we can. But and we, I think, I think we could get some media coverage, so that would be good. Yeah. All right, we can plan it at our next meeting. So okay, so moving along. Um, what else do we have? So oh, the other thing with the safe routes to school, and Chris has been in touch with parents from all the schools and also with teachers so one of the things that the safe Read school program is doing now is they do have that second and third grade curriculum you know to teach people about like safer walking and things and cool. they um and the part of what safe reads to school is doing because they don't have a lot of staff themselves like we do have one coordinator for the four western mass counties is that they're also training the trainer so there's been some interest from PE teachers and others at the schools to maybe do that. And then they could help perpetuate it like with each, each year mm -hmm. with like the second or third grade, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, that is great. And the Safe Reads to School program, they're also having a big event on Wednesday, October 4th. They do these like events quarterly that are all like bike walk, you know, bike walk, roll to school days. So October 4th and Chris has um, some parents at, each of the elementary schools and at the middle school who said they could help on events. Um, so that's still being organized. And um, okay, so the other, I mean, I put it on the agenda, just informational about the idea of the Transportation Commission, which is something that the town manager had first suggested, you know, well over a year ago um, about TAC. The potential of like instead of having TAC having an actual transportation commission, Northampton, for example, they do have a transportation and parking commission. Um, they are mainly advisory, but they also, you know, have more power than TAC has. 
Um, so that when he presented it to the council, there were a lot of questions and some concerns about that. And so he's revising some of it. It's going to come back to them. And he has invited TAC to like participate. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, we've talked about this in the past and parking seems much more like a political issue as well as like a very um, area specific issue. So obviously it's important to our downtown and certain places. Um, and, and it's not, I would be happy. I mean, there, there had been a, tr a, a parking commission and then they got merged with the, the pedestrian and yeah, I was on it for a while. Yeah. And um, and I think that really, you know, the, the parking thing is more of a central Amherst issue rather than a north or south Amherst issue. And it also isn't really toward the spirit of our current committee. Like but I so in our current charge about about not we're not necessarily about the public way per se we're more about increasing biking and 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 efficient transportation through the town which does not include parking which feels like a much more political issue that's all i'm saying and we've i felt like we've we've gone through this before and it's not really what we do hmm. Parking. Now we have been asked, like TSO has asked us to weigh in on some parking stuff. Sure, because right certain, in specific certain parking issues, especially parking on the street, right? Are oh yeah, no, this is like us. parking on the street. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's also it's about parking in general. Parking oh. is about parking. It's about where to put your freaking car, which really is not. I feel like what we do and it's it's very personal as well right yeah i mean i was happy that we were part of the conversation about like kendrick park and things yes and but that that's, was that's also and... very different in the sense that's that's an area specific issue and it has to do with like safety of pedestrians mm -hmm. that's but i think i mean do. i do feel like that's one thing that we that we could contribute to like discussions about parking, right? Like I've always been concerned Not about really. the but back in the back in parking <laughs> downtown, but, for example. But I don't know. Maybe Eve remembers many, many years ago there were several people who are on our pedestrian transportation committee specifically because they were very interested in parking. These were oh. town business owners mm -hmm. and um someone who only I don't know, another person who was only really a driver and was very interested in parking for whatever reason, they were participating in the public good. And um, and I feel like the issues are very, huh. um, and, and both of those members ended up leaving our committee because our committee isn't really about parking or maybe it's even prioritizing parking. Eve, you remember those. I, I, I have a those suspicion days. of who you might be talking about, but um, I'm not sure. But um, I would just say. No, but I, those people participated. It's just like they eventually fled away because our committee wasn't really about like parking. Yeah, I just want to say I, I would I would just caution you not to say that you don't do parking because um, parking has so like it's fine to say that that's not central to what we do and someone else should be in charge of it, but I would absolutely retain the right of tax yes. to comment mm -hmm. and inform on any parking anywhere. Um, one, because, you know, it changes the flow of traffic, whether there are cars parked on the street or not. Another, because if there are cars parked on the side of the street, it can make the bike lanes next to them much more dangerous and it yes. matters like Agreed. which side you put the bike lanes on. And third, if we're prioritizing parking in the town, that's sort of the opposite of prioritizing a mode shift towards non-car transportation. So I would just say, don't say, don't say we wash our hands of this issue. You know what I mean? And just yes. make it, make Agreed. it clear that that the TAC 
has things to say and will weigh in, it, even if you don't want to be in charge of it. I guess, I guess I'm, I, what I'm ultimately against is just being a transportation and parking. Like, I don't want it. I, I feel like that could easily overwhelm all of us all the time. And that's not what we're here to do. We're here to make like a vision for what should happen to help prioritize what what we feel are the priorities in the town and not to make the minutia of parking decisions, which. Oh yeah. But I mean, if you look at the ones that we have been involved with, right. They are about safety and things too. Right. right? Like Lincoln. But Jason wanted to say and, something. Yeah. Kendrick. I just, and... just wanted to say, don't dismiss parking because it yeah, I mean... generate revenue and revenue can be used for a lot of things. If you that's can true. get your finger in the revenue pie, <laughs> you can but, but afford to what... widen a road for bike lanes. That's don't, true. I just, and wait, I just want to say, I'm, don't dismiss it completely. But, but I feel I'm not like a that should be more here. like a public works. You know, we can help you help yeah. decide oh, the don't... safety issues and the we, uh, yeah. street oh. issues, but that should not be the sun. I don't want to get stuck at doing that because that. But it, it's not why I'm here because but I like some of the policies though, right? It's about like, right. We wrote a memo to the town manager with the intent that it would go to the council about not allowing parking. I mean, this is something DPW brought to us, but not having parking on right. arterial right. and collector routes. Right. And when we weigh in on Kendrick park or we weigh in on Lincoln sure. and things, right. We're thinking about mm -hmm. safety. So I do feel, I mean, that's some of the, the main work that we've done that's actually gotten through the town mm -hmm. so yes, but it's only I do because see... no one else wants to deal with it because it's so but political I, but i also feel like it's um i mean I, I i don't know to me that's part of it like about planning like planning transportation and making decisions like parking is part of that equation street and do we design. want to be involved street design i mean and do we yeah. do we want to be involved with the minutia about fees and like some of that no we do not want to be no. involved with that but we definitely i mean i feel like i have things to say about parking yes but do we From want the all the no, parking no. complaints to come to us oh no i don't think that's what it would no, be necessarily doesn't... right no that's not how that works that can still go to the parking administrator they can handle that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If, if, like, if, but some of the bigger questions. We've but. thought about this for a while. I just wanted to say, I, I think you're right, Kim. I don't think you want it to be a transportation and parking. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. It would be taken over by members who are trying to jam oh, right. decisions that they want, you know, and there's at least one rumor that the reason people want a transportation commission is so that they can get their parking garage approved. So I, I think it's a oh. wise idea to be... Um, Leary. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, but again, I would not totally wash your hands of parking. Yeah. Um, and, and Oh, so we could call ourselves a transportation committee and it could be, it could it also include parking. some elements of parking. I understand your point. Okay. Yeah. But you I don't think that parking should go to you and ask your advice, but you should not be the parking committee. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I guess that was my worry because I'm happy to be the transport help help at transportation advising, mm -hmm. but I don't want to be in charge of parking right. because it's too. No, we will not personal. be in charge of parking. No. <laughs> and, and it would overtake our committee. I think our committee, I right. want, I want our committee to continue but... to be like broad thinking and help like townwide and prioritizing needs of everyone and not being a political thing which i think a lot of parking is very region specific oh well i mean i think to me i support the idea of a transportation commission in general like i like the idea like if you look at the transportation commissions that have been created in other communities right a lot of times they include like dpw and planning and you know sometimes like safety Please. people like well, all I, the I all the kind of like key players are in the room together yeah. and because you know with tac i mean one thing we've heard about tac sometimes is one there was all, there was an idea of getting rid of tac because we were redundant you know with well, the that was nonsense because now that's a... <laughs> but but also i mean that you know functionally 
like sometimes we're not meeting that often because we really don't have that much to do because we are waiting to get referrals from TSO which or something they because they can't handle because they don't have the expertise or the bandwidth because they're dealing with all the other town wide issues. No, no I mean, for sure. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, they should give it. So to me, it's a way of like having a committee, I mean, a commission that has a bunch of departments in it and it can be like sort of like one stop shopping on some of this, like where that where we wouldn't be like sitting waiting for somebody to ask us for right but that's, or that's what we were us. before it's just like oh wait we can't handle all this because we don't have the expertise or the bandwidth so let's but, uh, but then there were questions too about um just because the council are the keepers of the public way right and so most decisions about the public way are under their domain and and right and tso is part of the council I mean, some counselors were concerned about like giving some of that up or things, but I mean, I guess we could see. Well, then they can do it themselves. I mean, if they're concerned about giving it up, but it's a balance. I mean, so the town manager is working on it. He said he would contact us. So, you know, as it gets further along, it will go back to the council. Yeah. Was, yeah. The, the council asked for it back by October, the end of October. I'm not sure that time of <laughs> frame will stay. <laughs> So you just has an opportunity to wield all the political power in town. <laughs> yeah, very powerful. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you don't see us running for council, right? So never. Okay. Um, or planning board. <laughs> wow. Not yeah, me. yeah, not your family. Okay. Um, all right. And did we have anything else? So I did oh, so Amber has now given us five sets of minutes. Well, we have it's, four, it's, no, we have four of us. Stefan, are you here? He's here, I think. So, so we had issues last time because sorry, I'm back. We didn't if have that. I'm working on minutes. I'm going to run away. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Hi, all. I think we should get started on the minutes because we have not done a very good job of um, keeping up with Amber. Yeah, and, and, that, Amber and that was why Amber when not. I. I sent out those ones, the earlier ones again. <laughs> March, April, and May. So, yeah, so we can at least get those older ones. I'm pulling them up right now. I can well, share my screen. The problem is, want. I don't know what the rules are because only you and I were there for the. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's one reason we didn't do them. Should we just like at the next meeting, should we just include, like, should we have them up front? Yeah. You say we're going to move through all the I minutes and then Marcus is here and Chris is here oh, and we have the majority of us. We could do it that way. We couldn't do the last one. Yeah, we can't do any of these because we only have three. No, I think, us. hang on. I think yeah. if you have a quorum, okay. yeah. people that weren't there can abstain. Okay. We can right. do it. People we that still were vote there them. can okay. vote. Okay. We can do and it. And that can pass. All right. I, Thank I, you. I, <laughs> I'm not a great public meeting no i bet i bet you're right okay. Okay. all right so i i can share the march one hold on no i mean we all got it oh we wrote it okay yes and so jason this, was here then too so the um vote. the so, march right now one is just you and i tracy and then all right so she so amber spelled andy steinberg's name wrong but well okay correct other than that i'll tell her and i feel like we had these up we I did and then we just fine. didn't do them right yeah so, so i'm i'm happy with passing these yeah so this was about the street lights policy and the bike ped map which we're still working on and okay yeah well that vote was in favor all right we vote in favor him and right. tracy um, all right <laughs> would be joe and stefan all right so here all right so we just voted those and i'll just tell amber to fix andy's name so March 23rd, okay. um, uh, minutes are passed. And next we have Lord April approved. 27. And Joe, you are at this one as well. Um, Stefan was absent. So um, okay, we have looked at here previously. And all oh, right, so it's ECAC you met with us about the plan and the streetlights policy and the act to reduce traffic fatalities and yeah you presented that right so i guess the other thing was do we 
I don't understand this part of the minutes at the end, Kim, mm -hmm. about it says um, other matters. So the bike ped plan subcommittee, we haven't met yet. Still want to do that, but um, potentially have a special meeting once the new school referendum passes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that, that about? Uh, about um, that was about about um, in, increasing the awareness about the biking, walking around the new school, which we haven't done yet. But we didn't need to have a meeting for that, right? No, oh, but it was about organizing. Oh, so not a TAC meeting. It no, was no, about no, no. like yes. a, a stuff related to San Francisco. All right, so I can ask her to like clarify that one. Okay. Because I'm I'm even confused by. <laughs> so this is item six six B I yeah. and I I for for um. Right. Uh, so Chris. Her. So Chris. Um, Lindstrom and I had met, you know, with Debbie Westmoreland and, and then a couple different times and that the idea was to like do that again, because we did stuff like, and there's also the new Safe Reach to School Coordinator who, mm -hmm. her name is Tori for the four counties. And um, so I'm just, I'll just, so we can approve those. I'll just um, send Amber like a small update to those. So Amber. Yeah. Um, Tracy will send Amber an uh, update on that. Amber an update on those portions, but otherwise, but otherwise it was all fine, right? Yes, so. so all those in favor. Um, okay. Aye. Aye. All right. Three, including Tracy, Kim, and Joe. Joe, yeah. Um, and all those abstaining um, includes um, Stefan. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Kim. Next with um, item six alterations um and then um we have our may 18th meeting um tracy kim and joe again um <laughs> and yeah i guess yeah, okay, Stefan was that. absent although i'm not sure maybe you weren't maybe you were just silent stefan maybe not absent oh this is my next meeting who just rang the bell okay so oh, now you have back-to-back -back meetings okay. yeah um so um so should yeah sorry i'll be right there okay um i guess we can kim do you want to just do it next time yeah maybe we should I'm yeah sorry. okay so we'll just tell her we got through the two yeah okay thank you all right thank you all right thank you thank you jason thanks thank thanks, you jason. i hope i was right about the abstaining in the voting so, no, that sounds right to me. All right. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank Bye-bye.